Hello and welcome to another episode of Housemark Developer Let's Play. Here with me is Harry Kruger. Say hello, say hello, Harry. Hello again. Hey guys. The guy behind us is Ilari Kuitene. He's a CEO. My name is Mikal. We'll be playing Defenders, which is a Resogun uh, DLC. And yes. uh, protector mode from that. Uh, Harry will be here playing and answering questions. So go ahead and ask questions and then uh, he'll be showing me how to play the game after I ruin the game. By sucking at it. You so, do right, man. what are you guys talking about? The multipliers? Yeah, generally uh, scoring techniques and what the best way to get the highest score in, in this mode is. And I guess just like all the other modes, uh, the multiplier is of course the key to getting the highest score. Uh, each mode has its own scoring uh, mechanics, of course, and in this one we tied it really heavily with the humans. So, as you notice, when you're killing enemies in this mode, your multiplier isn't going up at all. Yeah. So, it's based on the humans. Uh, I don't think, the, as far as I'm concerned, I don't. I think in the beginning it's okay just to take a single human there because it's all very simple. But then the, towards the end you should gather your humans close to this base and then yeah. put them at one single time. Well, technically, uh, the more humans you deposit in one sweep, uh, the higher bonus you will get for them. So yeah. in theory, if, if you're a perfectionist and you're really going for like the best possible score, you would you will want to be gathering the humans there from the very beginning and uh, depositing them in large patches. That's what I figured. Yeah. So is that the only difference we have to previous modes? Uh, well, not really. There's a, there's a lot of differences here. Uh, a lot of them are aesthetic. Like for example, every time you complete the city construction, the entire level flips around. Yeah. And of course we have some power-ups that are different and uh, there's a couple of new enemies here, the new enemy behaviors and we have of course the, the landing pad which is where you actually deposit humans and every time you save a human you get this kind of revenge attack that's come, come yeah. out from the city itself. I noticed that when there's that UFO attacking you should save a couple of humans there, like for right now, and then uh, then they destroy the UFO. Yeah, so that's uh, the UFO you're referring to is basically the city destroyer. Oh, so sorry. So this yeah, Independence Day kind of... Oh, well, now you have a super boost, you can show that off. Ooh, yeah, blowing stuff up. Yeah. So, interesting side note here. Uh, we were originally experimenting with a lot of different modes for this expansion. And one of the things we were playing around with was the idea of a booster mode. So kind of similar to what we had in uh, Stardust. Uh, in many ways that mode didn't really work out as well as we liked, but we did get to keep this kind of super boost, supercharged boost from that and integrate it into this mode. And in many ways kind of the spirit of that mode kind of lives on through the booster mode challenge that we have actually. That's yeah. One of the challenges that you have with this. Uh, Available from the free challengers uh, patch. Yeah, uh, I'm just going to address this uh, bonus shield thing that's being discussed here. So in uh, survival mode, we had the, the power shield. So the second shield that you collected actually maxed out your ship's attributes. In this mode, we wanted to do something different. So now you have a bonus shield. The bonus shield doesn't actually increase your stats, but it does increase your multiplier by a factor of uh, a certain percentage. And it also increases the bonuses that you get from saving humans. So your multiplier will actually increase a little bit more while you have the power shield and your deposit of humans. Oh, yeah. I don't think that's something that's easy to notice. It's, oh, it, it's have... not. It's one of those advanced techniques. And it's basically, you know, the better you play, uh, the more uh, risk you, you put into the game, the, the higher the rewards as well. It's, it's rewarding, you know, very extra special level that I'll probably never get to feel. Ah, I still got it. Whoa. But yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a different mode. To me, it's uh, you know, it's got a little bit of that survivor feel to it because it's endless, and uh, it's also, I think, for me, much nicer than the survivor. I I personally. 
find some different kinds of points of appeal in this world that are, are very specific. For example, the I call it a UFO, but you can call it a city destroyer. City destroyer, yeah. And this is a very nauseating little uh, thing that's cool visually. Who came up with the the turning uh, lava volcano activity with the city? Uh, that was actually our artist Sebastian. So he came up with that idea. It's kind of interesting because originally uh, we had this idea for the this uh, booster mode that I mentioned before that we were going to try out. Yeah. Uh, we was thinking that the background would just be slanted a little bit, you know, just to give it a slightly different look, give it that futuristic racetrack kind of vibe, you know. Yeah. But uh, we didn't end up going that direction. And once we had the tech in to rotate the level, we saw that it looks pretty cool to rotate the whole thing around. Exactly. So we so just kept well that. I just want to address something here the guys are talking about. Um, yeah, so there's this discussion going on about the teleport token. Yes. Uh, the the power-ups are randomized, so you might get it now, maybe you won't get it at all. I, I did have it already once. Okay. But uh, yeah, the idea with the, with the teleport uh, token is that when you're carrying a lot of humans, uh, and you have a lot of other humans in that same area that you're kind of trying to micromanage and prioritize, that the teleport would just allow you to well, instantly teleport the humans you're carrying back to the base, so you yeah. don't have to worry about them. Exactly. Um, I do understand that if you're trying to hoard as many humans as possible, uh, that it can throw a bit of a wrench into that strategy. So, yeah, from, from that point, uh, I guess it is maybe not the, you know, the most efficient power-up to use for uh, for scoring. But then again, it's one of those power-ups that uh, you don't have to use, right? It's triggered by the throw of human button. Yes, but the throw of human button also drops the humans on the ground, and that's oh, yeah. how you accumulate them near the base. That's true, I forgot about that. To be honest, that, that, that has been quite a controversial uh, power-up. Uh, even internally, we had a lot of uh, a lot of discussions over how it should work, if we should even keep it at all. Uh, overall, we ended up just keeping it because it adds a little bit of variety and uh, kind of freshness to the way that you know, yeah. the human dynamics work. But uh, Maybe we can see it as a new way of... I mean, it, it, to some extent, the worst that it does is that it messes around with your strategy a tiny bit. And that's... Uh, maybe it can be like a negative power to some people. You know, yeah. some games also have uh, negative power-ups. I think, yeah, it, it actually depends a lot on your skill level because uh, if you're just trying to survive and usually after the first 5-10 minutes uh, the majority of players are just, you know, they're in a battle for survival and you're still trying to save the humans at that point and, you know, juggling all of the humans and having, you know, 10 of them active on the playfield at once it creates a lot of tension yeah. And the teleport token can sometimes relieve you a bit of that tension, you know. But you exactly. can just you have like four humans, full cargo, you deposit them, you collect another three humans that are on the ground and you're good to go. So it's it's a it's a really cir circumstantial kind of uh, power up. Sometimes it can feel like a bit of a, a pointless addition, other times it can be a lifesaver. Exactly. At least from my personal experience with my somewhat uh, average skill level, I would say. At yeah, least so average. Somebody was asking what the uh, score, personal scores of the team members. Uh, mine's, my personal score sucks. I haven't played uh, that well. And I think I can assume that I'm correct by saying that Kruger has a bit more than I do. Without knowing any specific points or so. Man, this boost is taking me a long time. I'm getting dizzy here. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm a medium level. Player. Yeah, Harry, I've been a bit uh, curious about uh, how can you prolong the, the super boost there? Is it that you need to hit a certain number of enemies? Yeah. So <laughs> every time you kill, I think it's around 50 enemies, you get a boost recharge actually, and. You can keep that going for pretty long. I'll I'll just keep this going. Yeah. I don't Three mind. hours later. I'm actually not gonna. It's hurting my eyes a little bit. But this is very much reminiscent of the, the booster mode. Also. Here we yeah. go. That was uh, 
quite a boost. Yeah, one thing that I don't see a lot of people using is uh, basically the uh, restarting the boost once the uh, super boost is activated. That's something that was a bit difficult to communicate in hindsight, but uh, the super boost actually works similarly to the overdrive. So once you activate it, you have a fixed time that it lasts, yeah. and you can basically let go of the boost and restart it as many times as you want in oh. that time window. So you can actually have this really sharp changes in direction, for example, and you know use the boost and explosion a lot more strategically there as well. That's interesting. Yeah, I didn't even know about that. Whoa! Good thing I got that shield. Um, so, can you tell about the level progression a little bit? Right now I can see 1-3 uh, up there. Yeah, so it's a fairly, it's a somewhat similar to the, the structure we had in the survival mode. Yeah. So here we have basically three distinct phases. And each phase is separated into two, you would call them kind of like sub-phases. So basically you have the top side of the level, and then you have the bottom side, which is the volcano. Yeah. And every time you complete both sides, that's basically an entire phase being completed there. Exactly. And as you can see, like the level... Uh, it's turning now. The level actually turns increasingly faster and faster. Right. And uh, once the, the third phase is complete, then the whole level basically unwinds in a way and goes back to the, its, its resting place in the first phase. And of course you have these, like the, the, the skybox is a bit more red here, you have these kind of lightning bolts, you have more explosions from the volcano, so it gets a bit more intense uh, visually as well. Communicating that finality of the certain phase. And, but, yeah. but each, each, each uh, larger phase then progressively harder with more humans needed to be rescued to uh, yeah oh i was talking too much it's actually good because now maybe we can see you play a little bit 11 I minutes try. 11 seconds that's my high score uh try to beat me i must admit that uh well as you guys know wrestlegun is a game that really demands your full-time attention and it's not the best game to be playing while you're talking at the same time no, but uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. So, you know, we already kind of went through a lot of the points that uh, you wanted to do differently in this mode. Uh, do you see this is, to me, this is kind of like a hoarding mode. You, you have very different appeal to the humans, and I think the humans play a much bigger role in this. I mean, they've always played a bigger role, but now they're... Um, a little bit of a must. In arcade mode, for example, you didn't have to pick up humans. And uh, in, uh, in the survivor mode, it was very different. Yeah. So how do you how do you feel with with the humans? Is it now that this is this is the human hoarding mode, or am I correct in assuming that? Well, I guess that's one way to see it. I guess the thing is that we have like so many different layers to the gameplay here that it largely depends on your playstyle as well and what exactly you're aiming to achieve. So if you're just playing for survival, of course you want to deposit humans as fast as possible, get more power-ups as quickly as possible and so on. But if you're really going for that world-class score, then you're going to adjust your playstyle, for the humans a bit more, maybe be a lot more selective on where and when you actually use your power-ups. Like yeah, that. absolutely. Yeah, so do you have? I'm sorry to interrupt. Do sure. you have the the overdrive, the special version of overdrive? There's not a lot of Super enemies. Super overdrive. Yeah, uh, there's not a lot of enemies, so maybe we want to save that a little bit. Well, because, uh, I can save it for now. Save it for now. <laughs> so what's the difference with it? This it's, it's, it looks different, but it, yeah, well, it's a badass version of the overdrive. Uh, we have another question, like uh, if it is better to wait for the destroyer to save all the humans or it's best to save them as fast as uh, possible. Maybe you should repeat it because uh, yeah, so I don't know if you can hear it. Sure. Is it better for the destroyer to... Too many distractions. Save the humans? 
uh, like uh, to say to all the youth, no, if, if you should wait for the destroyer to be in, on the play field, uh, or you should say you must as fast as you can. Yeah, okay, so is it uh, better for you to wait for the destroyer to come out, or should you be saving humans all the time? And I think we already touched upon the whole human hoarding aspect of it. Uh, you know, getting those power-ups quickly does have an advantage uh, if you if you want to utilize them, making your... For me especially, it makes playing the game a bit more easier if you have access to all these cool power-ups. But then again, they are randomized, so you can't really calculate what you're going to get, but you can maximize the output of those uh, power-ups. Uh, you, you do get better points if you have collected humans there and then turn them in to construction when, uh, like right now, might be a good moment. One extra thing to note here is that when you when you deposit enough humans to complete the the construction phase in a way, like the building of the city, you get this celebration, right, with all the spotlights and explosions and so on. Yeah. And that actually insta kills the. Uh, the city destroyer as well, so you can use that as part of your strategy. Yeah, that's a big, big uh, homing missiles party thing. I'm really something. Uh, yeah, I can see that. I don't know what's going on. But yeah, the, uh, I, I, one of the things I want to mention is that you're juggling the humans out of the the bridges because the bridges do disappear. Yeah, yeah, that's something that we had in uh, survival, survival mode. mode as well. I guess the thing is that. Uh, you want to be destroying the city destroyers as often as possible because you get a lot of points from them, that's one thing. And of course every time you destroy them you actually get an attribute up token as well. So you get to upgrade your ship for the well, for the rest of the run. It's kind of like a permanent power-up. You can get attribute, overdrive or a boost power-up there. Absolutely. So there's a lot of different strategies at play. Uh, here we can see really well the, the houses that the humans are building. Uh, so there's more houses each uh, turn or uh, phase. Uh, what's the maximum amount of houses you can have there? Or maximum amount of humans? Well, technically there's no cap obviously, like you can just continue saving humans infinitely. Yeah. Obviously visually we do have limited <laughs> real estate for yeah. the cities. So I think, uh, if I remember correctly, I think you can actually have a maximum of 10 buildings. Right. And then those 10 buildings basically just start getting upgraded. Uh, okay. The more you uh, deposit more humans there. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And this is actually something, this was one of the first things that we prototyped actually when making the original version of the vessel plan. So we had a lot of different uh, kind of methods for saving the humans. And one of the things we tried was that you would have like this... Landing pad. Uh, not a landing pad, that was an entirely new idea. Okay. But just having like this base of humans that you that you keep building up. We didn't get the house yeah, destroyer. I, I screwed up. Man. But yeah, uh, one, one other interesting thing here that adds a bit of interesting gameplay is that if you... If you, if you move down on this, you can actually see that it actually gets oh. pressed. So it's basically a button. It's definitely a button. So we call it the landing pad. But it's and basically, basically what happens is while you're holding this down, you see the, that green effect around there? Yeah. That's actually sucking in humans that are around the vicinity. Nice. So that way that way you can actually now, just Now you have broke it down? It got electrocuted? It, yeah, because the, um, the city destroyer attacked it basically. So now you can see the, the three red human icons in the background. Yeah, you need that to means that I need to save three humans now to resume uh, my previous pro basically. progress. Yeah. So in the end, you'll kind of lose. If you wouldn't have had the house destroyed, you would have had the three human advantage. Rather than now, you need to you need to have them there. Exactly. Yeah, it just sets you back a little bit. And obviously, you don't get a, a token for saving those three humans or a power up. I mean. Man. So what a what a waste of humans. Yeah. So that you need to be life. pretty mindful about the city yeah. destroyers. And another interesting thing that we did in this mode is that uh, the city destroyers' uh, frequency is actually completely time based. So it's kind of independent from the actual flow of the level. So 
so it's not like you know we spawn like 10 enemies 20 enemies and then and then a destroyer like we did in, yeah. for example survival mode right here you have the um oh, super was nice. so this is what i was talking about see you can oh there you go but it it didn't last nearly as long as mine this is embarrassing and uh yeah, it's, it's a bit embarrassing because my, my score was better than yours. Oh, speaking of which, sorry, um, about the easter eggs, I really want should, to... Should we go look at some photo mode easter eggs? Yeah, I really want to show off this one here. What, what, what do we have there? What do the icons at the top of the screen mean? I get the countdown to the destroyer, but uh, what is the one to the left? Uh, we'll go to the icons in a brief soon. Just a sec. I'd, yeah, we'll go to the. We're, we're looking yeah. at the Easter egg here. So here, originally, we had this. Uh, well, that's the commando dude from the other mod. Yeah. And he looked kind of uh, familiar there, like against the wall, kind of yeah. hiding. So we thought, why not throw in a reference to another popular game there? Can you guess which one? It I'm, is? I'm guessing this might be uh, related to Kojima. It might be somewhat related. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's pretty yeah. cool. So you have like a labyrinth where he's hiding. You should have put a box. <laughs> okay, what, what other Easter eggs do we have in this level? In this level, not so much actually. Not so much? Only just one Metal yeah. Gear? Well, I mean, if you look here, you can see that there are some humans that are just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> met their untimely demise. Every time I drop a human into the, the cesspool here, I notice that there's others there, you know, his long-lost brethren. And then I, I start thinking, oh, did I already miss some humans? Like, did I already drop some there? But then I figured it's just a artistic choice. Yeah. In hindsight, maybe we should have had the humans just accumulate in the pool and just yeah. float around. So... But yeah, let's go... We were, we were, there was questions about the, the, the icons. So... Yeah, so... Uh, okay, so in the middle you have the multiplier, obviously. You do have the, uh, the city destroyer icon or the countdown that comes up only when the countdown is active that's why we're not seeing it now <coughs> next to that we basically have the, the phase progression so that's how far you've gotten in the mold so now I'm in uh, basically well you could call it day one and uh, phase, phase one, one. Yeah. so it's fairly similar to survival in that mold it's, it has just more uh, more more phases uh, yeah, it, it's, it's a little bit more layered than uh, survival was, but the basic principle is the same. I guess the, the thing is just to have some clear reference point for your progress, and as a clear discussion point as well. And you can see that on the leaderboards, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So, just a nice reference for how far you got into the mod. And after that, of course, you have your bombs. Cool. Um, so, do you want to go check out uh, the other mode? Commando. Yeah, Commando. How's that sound? Sounds great, man. Just checking if we have any more questions here. But what about... Uh, are you from Housemarque? Yeah, we're, we are from Housemarque. This is Harry Kruger who actually made the game. And um, I'm his friend. <laughs> so I, I want to address this question here. So why sometimes the City Destroyer comes later than others at the beginning? So the thing is that right now the, the City Destroyer countdown is activated, right? So, let's see if I don't screw this up. So if I manage to... Yeah, so now, as you notice, I finished the city and the countdown Stop. turned to, uh, turned to blue, basically, which is the color we use for well, things that have, are not being updated. Positive. So it's it's frozen now. So the countdown has now stopped, and once the level resumes, after we take care of the volcano stuff, yeah, then uh, it's going to start again from ten. I th uh, th there's a minimum number that we used there because obviously you don't want to be surprised by just have the city destroyer show up out of nowhere. Yeah. Oh, okay. um, so it's gonna... Yeah, it, it's a bit hard now because I'm trying to play and think and talk at the same time. It's difficult, no? Yeah. yeah. But uh, the thing is that in the, in the second phase now, if you haven't built any buildings, if you haven't deposited any humans, well, there's no city for the city destroyer to actually destroy. 
Now right. that I deposited one, and we, we have the, a building, we start up. We have the counter again. Yes. Okay. Cool. So in the beginning, there there can be a bit of variation in the city destroyer's appearance, kind. Let's try so to get have some the uh... some commando. No, no, no. Wait, wait. This, this is this. Uh, I think the sound effect that we have when the City Destroyer shows up is probably the best sound effect we have in the game. And this is the second best sound effect. Just that tragic... It sounds like Optimus Prime uh, going to the toilet and exploding at the same time. Uh, sure, That's yeah. my take on it. That's my personal take. Not everybody has to feel the same way. But uh, yeah, I do agree that still it's a very powerful sound effect. Are also the guy who did the sound effects, the music, and everything for this game, Ari Polkin, and he also is, is Arnold, Arnie in this game. We did we didn't get the original actor, so uh, we had to settle for the next best thing. So now, uh, after this, as we go to to protect uh, commando mode, we'll uh, we'll get to see some sampling of this uh, beautiful sounds. And even if you play at home, you probably already noticed that there's a there's sort of a humoristic touch to the commando mode. But that's not all commando mode, of course, it is. But it's a different take. I think the for most of the fans playing uh, oh, no. <laughs> Defenders DLC, this mode, Protector, is of course the main mode uh, because it's so close to the original gameplay ideas. As for the previous DLC, we had a mode called Demolition, which was, you know, slightly uh, influenced by other arcade games, uh, as, uh, as now Commando is definitely a variation on the gameplay that's more of Missile Command and uh, you know, maybe some uh, Space Invaders. We can talk about that yeah. soon. Uh, yeah, okay. I guess we can move on to Commando. Let's move on, let's move on to Commando. Else?